watching Mallrats, a Star Wars podcast. Thank you for listening. Okay, welcome back to another episode of the Mallrats podcast. I think it's been like two weeks since the last one. It's been a bit. It's really good to do this with you again. Yes, very. Sorry for the delay, folks. Long break. A long break. We uh, uh, schedule conflicts and, um, I mean, we're not re- we're not going... You know, not rehashing a live episode. No, no, so no. we're just filling in the gap between, you know, Boba Fett and Obi Wan Kenobi, which we have Kenobi news coming up. But also, just, you know, real life, real life has some uh, obstacles at times, and then things happen, and, and the priority of a podcast just kind of goes by the wayside. So it, it has been something that um, I've hated to push off. Um, I know we've, a couple on occasions, you know, we, we've set up and ready to do it, and then. It's just laziness. Well, exhaustion from, you know, I'm sure our listeners can understand that. Life comes sometimes. But, uh, but yeah, so, it, well, this has given us the opportunity to have some, um, you know, Star Wars-related news pop up, uh, you know, since our last talk. So it's enjoyable to um, not necessarily break the news. I mean, if you go to a podcast to break news, that's yeah, no. definitely not. Um, but uh, I thought we'd talk about, uh, well, to... Back it up a little bit. Yes. We, we're taking a break from our rewatch, rewatch episodes and our talk along commentary of Mandalorian. So we had a good break between first and second season, and we thought we would do a um, first off talk about uh, you know Obi Wan Kenobi stuff since the trailer came, and preview that for you know a month, two months down the road. But um, we're going to have the first of our Star Wars literary discussions. Book review. Book review, talk. More than just plot, though. Yeah, More no. Opinions. Opinions and, uh, you know, um, and, and if this sticks, you know, the, we'll, we'll get into some more. Um, but the first book that we're tackling is uh, Darth Bane, Path of Destruction by uh, Drew Carpishian. So... I thought that that would be a, a fun one to uh, jump off on, and that was your first Star Wars book, your first experience, exposure. I, yeah, I, I guess. guess first adult. Yeah, definitely book. Adult book. You know, they have tons of those small kid yeah. books or those. Or they we took Cat talked about them once on our Luke Skywalker stories. Luke Skywalker stories, the young adult books, or the uh, I guess comics. Oh. The like, Jeffrey Brown, yeah. those little caricature fun things. So, um, anyways, that's what we're going to get to in a bit. But we first want to start off with uh, the Obi-Wan Kenobi stuff. But before that, this past weekend, were you aware that a Star Wars alum won an Oscar? No. Beat, beat, no. I wasn't as well until he won. Uh, the gentleman's name uh, from the Academy Award winning Best Picture Coda, oh, yeah. Troy Kutzer, who was the father and stole his scenes and was fantastic. And he cleaned up on all of the Best Supporting uh, Awards, including the Oscars. Um, a little known credit of his occurred in the first season of Mandalorian. So he wasn't from the, the movies, but from the TV show. And it was from the Gunslinger episode where Boba hooks up with uh, Bobby Cannavale's son, uh, Toro, right? Toro Calican. The character name. And that's where they go and hunt Fennec Shan. So this guy, we, we didn't see his face, but he had a very influential um, and probably beyond just this episode because we saw it in Boba Fett. But even though he's not credited, what contribution did this um, deaf actor contribute? I'm trying to think of. Well, I know, I know what it is, but basically the sign language that they use. The Tuscans to communicate with Mandalorian. I was trying to think of a clever name instead of like American American sign American. language. Well, Tuscan sign language. And uh, we, fair to say, neither of us are experts on an ASL. Nope. So let's just assume he created the 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 dialogue that they sure. had there. You know, if they weren't speaking the same, you know, language from the throat, they created this. And I remember thinking that was really cool. And Mando knew the language and they could communicate. So that was him. So he was in, um, you know, a, a Mandalorian episode, and now he is Academy Award winning. Um, well, and that was I, part of the Academy. The Academy? Is it just all the awards? Uh, like who does the voting and who makes it up? Yes. Yep. Influencers, people—not influencers like YouTube stuff, but 
um, you know, former winners, academies, you know, directors, executives. It's just a big, big club, and they do the voting. Well, with the Screen Actors Guild, it's just actors, right, that do the voting for that, or the Producers Guild, or the Writers Guild, or the Directors Guild. And so, you know, he was cleaning up on all of those awards. Um, but I'd be curious to know if he had any influence in the Boba Fett series, you know, the Probably. times the times that they Not had it. In it, but with the language. Like maybe bring him on set or something and help out? I don't know, but it, it was just wonderful. I just loved him, and I think it was the day after um, I found out uh, that he was in it, uh, in Mandalorian, and that was just really cool because he was just so great in the movie but then his oscar speech was just so impassioned and literally the way he signs it's like a dance it was just i mean I, it was just so beautiful and if you haven't seen that please look it up um but anyway so that was a cool thing that happened that we wouldn't have been able to talk about you know uh, up until now uh, yeah. even with our delay so i guess we want to talk about the obi-wan kenobi uh teaser it's not technically a trailer um, it was the first one that came out, so I'm sure they'll come out with another one. It says trailer. It, well, it Obi-Wan says trailer on trailer. IMDb, but when they released it, it was called the teaser. So whatever. It's a minute and a half, minute 45, so it, that's a pretty good-sized trailer. Um, so we're just going to do a watch-along with it. Um, you, know, you don't necessarily have to sync up with us, but if you want to sync up with us, feel free to do Please so. Don't. Please don't. Um, but it's really wonderful to hear Ewan McGregor's voice again. And we spent a podcast or two ago just kind of at the towards the end in the news section, just kind of what do we think it will be about? And we had no idea. So no. here's the first opportunity to see visually what what the aesthetics are going to be like. Is it just Tatooine where it's like Boba Fett 2.0? Um, or are we going to get to see more space type Hopefully stuff? Hopefully we'll get flashbacks. I'm sure we will probably get flashbacks. All right, so we're going to click it. Uh, three two one go no okay but you smiled i did okay there's a zeopi kind of camel like snout thing all right now this takes place 10 years after revenge of the sith looks about right yeah so that kid's about 10 who's doing the, that he's watching little Luke Skywalker, which would have been like a year older than Anakin. Oh. Duel of the Fates music. Okay, so yeah, here we have... kind of weird. Well, that's the Grand Inquisitor from the Clone Wars, or from uh, Rebels. I'm sure, I'm sure Cat is going to have something to yes. say about it. Yes. His head wasn't it elongated was enough. enough, not like the cone heads or something from, you know, the old Saturday Night Live. Um, and our computer just froze up a little bit. <sighs> ah, technology. Um, but we didn't know Grand Inquisitors were going to be in it at all. And so now we're... So now, I mean, just... I guess. I guess. They're still looking to purge. Talking about Jedi can't sit back and do nothing, which we know Obi-Wan can't. Helicopters. Yes. So all the Inquisitors who have numbers and then the word sister, brother next to them. Oh, this music is beautiful. Oh, Star Wars music. And Obi-Wan looking sad. He looks at least 20 years older. Now, <laughs> <laughs> yep, sand will do that. Because in about nine years from this is when it's Alec Guinness and Luke Skywalker finds him in A New Hope. So, some, so he's really going to have to age a lot. <laughs> Every episode. Something. But uh, it, that, if you haven't watched it, watch it a couple times. It's just gorgeous, beautiful. I still wouldn't call it Obi-Wan Kenobi. I would just call Kenobi. it Kenobi would be cool. Um, but the book. Yeah, then in the book title was Kenobi as well. And it has the same font. Yeah, I guess so. I guess so, but the music was good. The visuals looked great. Um, you got some lightsaber play, which you don't get in the other Disney Plus shows um, outside of the dark saber. Um, you know, so this, I don't know how much force is going to be used, especially on Obi-Wan's um, with him because he's trying to hide 
and it looked like the Inquisitors were trying to uh, stir the pot a little bit to get him to come out. If not him, other Jedi. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Good job. Um, <laughs> uh, oh, some news that dropped today about this. So this is kind of breaking if people haven't seen it. This is to premiere. It's been advertised the 25th, which was the 45th anniversary of it premiering yep. um, the original New Hope. But today they announced that they're pushing it back two days to Friday. I'm, the, okay, I'm actually okay with that. Friday, Friday the 27th. And they're going to give you two episodes. Ooh. So for you waiting two extra days, two you days. get two episodes. Oh, no. Yeah. So anyways, Kenobi is coming. We're excited. Um, this is nice, though. It is. And they don't have any of the actors with their character names yet, other than the ones we already know about. Ooh. And a noticeable character we didn't see in that trailer or teaser was the presence Darth of Vader. Darth Vader, because it's been said that Hayden Christensen is showing up. Whether that's going to be flashbacks, like Mustafar flashbacks, or what, um, that was going to be really interesting. Give him a chance to, I don't know, resurrect? Attempt to do it again for all of the negativity that he took for it. What are your thoughts of him as Darth Vader? I guess right now I'm just thinking of the scene in Clerks 2 where they're ragging on his bad acting ruining the trilogy. Ma when they call him Mannequin Skywalker? <laughs> no, but, you know, to be fair, that's 20 years ago. Yes. I you know, he's a young actor now. He's a grown man. I don't... I, I don't... I never hear about him besides the sequel trilogy or the prequels i don't i think it'll be fine it'll just be the prequel acting but like a little bit better Hopefully it's, it's better. not going to be like ewan mcgregor style acting or right stealing the scenes yeah i i just i i kind of am glad he's getting an opportunity to come back and with all the crap he's had to eat and or eat yeah. over the years. Um, so we know that Joel Edgerton is coming back as Owen and Aunt Beru is coming back. Um, but the Grand Inquisitor, they've actually given the credit to Rupert Friend, who we teased an episode or two ago when we went through the cast. He's popular from the, the show Homeland, being a, a military type, not an assassin, but a, a, mar you know, a really good soldier slash... Uh, he was a good actor, put it that way. So uh, I'm intrigued to see what he can do with it because he's completely hidden under the prosthetics of it. Oh, yeah. um, so I didn't understand um, what uh, was going on. So anyway, that's Obi-Wan Kenobi, the trailer. We're, we're pretty excited about for the different characters. Cannot uh, wait. I, yeah, and visually it looks great. And gosh, to hear that music and to know John Williams is coming back to help out with at least the theme song or... Just a rehashing of his stuff, but it was, I didn't know what to expect. I don't know no, about you. Definitely not. Um, but uh, it looked cool. It looked like he got off world, or there's action happening off world, so it's not just confined to Tatooine. Um, yeah. I didn't really know if the show was going to be like before the prequels, like growing up in trials and testaments before Qui Gon. Oh. Or like, well, they would have. Him as Alec Guinness, or okay. I don't know the time period. They, well, that's. Yeah, yeah. They, uh, I, I think that they had talked about that it was going to be after his time on Tatooine, um, how yeah, he became that like hermit. It. Okay. If it had been a prequel to the prequels, oh. man, they would have had to de-age him down oh, yeah. to be, you know, give him his little ponytail back and all of that stuff. A Padawan story. I, I'm just really, it, people might have crapped on it, and the, the the newer millennial generation seems to have embraced the prequels. Uh, Filoni does a nice job of bringing in elements throughout, um, you know, and put them into the Disney Plus, um, you know, world with John Favreau. Um, so I think time will heal those wounds. Um, but I always thought that Ewan McGregor was really good in all of them, okay. and he, he brought professionalism and a, a continuity between uh, all three. I thought definitely. So anyway, um, so we're moving on to now our first literary discussion. Um, it is a Darth Bane. It's called Path of Destruction. Um, you know, it was a, a really a popular Star Wars book at the time. Um, it wasn't necessarily, I don't think it was, at, if it wasn't my first one, it was one of my first Star Wars books. I was always hesitant to get into Star Wars books because I'm like, I just love the music. Don't and, let it ruin it for you. And the lightsabers and all that. How can they do that in writing? 
fucking they did it they did it and i pushed it off for so long that it was through comic books um mainly the dark horse releases in the in the 90s um that and and in the 2000s that uh, really kind of wow there's some great stories and literature and even in stills i can feel the action so i said okay I'm a big dark side guy. I just, I love it. And, and the possibility of finding out about the Sith, all about the Sith, and the establishment of the Rule of Two. Because we hear about the Rule of Two, um, well, Palpatine. You know, him and, and Darth Vader. That's why there's only two. It's a question never answered, but not many people thought of where yeah. that came from. Yeah, and, and now all of this stuff is legend. So put it, explain the difference between legend and canon. So, the second Disney bought Star Wars, they said, like, everything before Disney, or, like, books, everything outside of movies, because they... The Probably, movies, yeah. Everything outside of movies, books, old comics, old stuff, is just all of a sudden this new thing. Not technically canon with Star Wars, but they're putting stuff into it, into the new stuff that can be canon, or is now canon, like... Uh, Kersantan in Book of Boba Fett is now canon. Yeah. It used to not be canon before the show. Maybe. I can't remember when those Dr. Aphras, they might have come out after. But, um, we'll yeah. But, it, but you're right. It, it's Everything was thrown into Legends, so none of it was continuity a, anymore. However, some of the stuff has gotten picked yeah. out. Like, Thrawn was a canon person and his life story, etc. But now, since the Disney... They brought out some books. Now, whether any sort of live action Thrawn's gonna have to follow these yeah. newer books, they just have to be approved. Like yeah, books, they have to very strict things that you can talk about and guidelines. Right, right. And so, anyways, Bane just I, I loved it, and we'll get into detail here in a little bit. Um, but uh, the rule of two is such a big deal in Star Wars. Always has been. Um, you know, why does Palpatine only have one? Sith Lord with him, you know, and and their their belief of why have a diminished force with a bunch thousands of users tapping into it, they'd be more, uh, they'd be stronger having just two people to control it. Yes, and that's the guiding principle, and it's in reference to Darth Bane who established that. And as we saw, he he researched the past, and there were other mentions of the Rule of Two, but you know, in this particular time period there was a whole Sith army, the Brotherhood of Darkness, and Sith Academies, which just I just thought was really cool. Very, Very cool. Historic. So uh, this is taking place roughly a thousand years before the movies. The, remember the whole B.C., A.D. type thing? But in Star Wars, it's before the Battle of Yavin. So we're a, a millennia before, okay? They could have just done, like, the start of... The first movie, like this, when the movie starts, it doesn't need to be the battle of that. Yeah, they just had that big turning point of the Death Star blows up and Skywalker is somebody now. Um, now, for people who, and I never got into them, but I've read books of that era, they talk about the Knights of the Old Republic, and that's predominantly 4,000 years before the Battle of Yavin. So... Some of the characters from that, you know, Revan, Darth Revan, and Re people like that who get mentioned by Bane as well. Um, you know, those people are 3,000 years before this story takes place, which is still... 4,000 years. It's, it's crazy. It's and know what, what always blows my mind, though, is that all of these different eras, they still have blasters. They still have hyperspace. Lightsabers. They still have lightsabers. What technology so advancements long, 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 are there? Long, long time ago. Yeah, but I mean, you know what I'm saying? There's not much advancement that we see technology-wise. They still have credits, and they still have their saloon. It's, I don't know, I guess our history here on Earth is so much shorter, but, you know, just going back a few hundred years or a hundred years, it's, it's much different. I just found that kind of interesting. Um... So we're starting, uh, the, the story takes place, and the thing that I enjoyed about this book, like I said, it was one of the first that I really took to. And my suggestion for anybody who hasn't read a Star Wars book, um, what kind of a Star Wars fan are you? Um, if you are a very casual fan, um, 
mainly just the movies. I strongly suggest doing the Heir to the Empire trilogy. It's the Thrawn trilogy from the early 90s by Timothy Zahn. And because you get new characters and new storylines, but you get Han Old and Leia and, and Lando and Luke and all of them. Um, and it, it's enjoyable. And it's a good story and it's fun. If you're somebody who, I don't want to say a diehard, but you don't necessarily need those original characters to enjoy a story, this would be perfect. I've suggested this book to a number of people, um, and, and well, you, but <laughs> individuals who knew nothing of Star Wars, and unless they were lying to me, they got through it and they enjoyed the ride. You know, the, the basic plot structure of the exposition, there's rising acts, there's characters, like, there's pathos, it, it's... It's a good story. Like holocrons and you know they explain what it is. They even do. If you don't know what a holocron is. It's you're not missing out on the story. Right, and you might have heard loose terms before, like a uh, sabak, just as a poker slash blackjack type game. This was the first book that I recall, and other books have done it, that went into great detail about the rules. And I wonder how much leeway or freedom. Drew, the author, had to just kind of make this stuff up, you know. As how much time he spent making a fictional game for his book? I don't know, but it, it was really intriguing, and so I, I just the, those attentions to detail. Plus, I like poker, um, so I just found it really, really interesting because it's more like blackjack, but yet you got to bet like Texas Hold'em poker. It, it was it was cool, but. Um, so, anyways, I, I strongly suggest somebody to read this book. If you don't have much experience with Star Wars, um, this would be a good one to jump in with. Um, and I think you'll enjoy the, the ride, especially if you're a reader. Um, yes, it's considered sci-fi because it's space and technology and science is involved. But it, I think it goes beyond that. Um, you really care for, well, the dark side, the bad guys. You know, this main character you see, he's not bad. You know, throughout until he starts to make some decisions. Um, but uh, it's kind it, of written like a fictional memoir, despite being in sort of the third person. It is third it person, is, yeah. It feels like you are there. This is personal experience. He's but very much an anti-hero. It feels like a story, and you love the character, but he's not doing good things. Right. Yeah, he's very much an anti-hero as we develop the um, uh, the presence of. Um, you know, the, the, this, this, uh, uh, I lost my train of thought because we have a special guest. Special guest, you are joining our podcast. You need to come closer to the mic. It doesn't reach that far. We have a special correspondent joining the podcast. Um, you probably have not read the Darth Bane book previously, have you? I have not. Not? Well, after listening to this podcast, I hope we don't spoil it for you because you're an avid listener to the Mall Rats podcast, are you not? Uh, this is uh, Lisa, who is, is our uh, special guest star, and uh, we are very honored to have you here as we have our first literary discussion on, um, I guess, the anti-hero of Darth Bane, who helped develop the rule of two in the Sith culture. Darth Bane. Bane. Just make something up. Is that the bad guy from Batman? Uh, okay, is that the Darth... It's the same name, and you know what? Maybe they got, well, Bane would have been comic books, so that would have been way before Star Wars. Did Star Wars rip off DC and the character Bane? Put a Darth in front of it, no one can tell. Yeah, he's a very big, muscly, strong man, so I guess it would share the similarities of Darth Bane. No yeah. mask, That's a though. deeper question than you thought. Huh? It, it was deeper. I'm glad you could at least make that some sort of connection to contribute with this. But is there anything you want to talk about? Uh, have you seen the trailer for Obi-Wan Kenobi? I have not. You haven't seen the trailer for Obi-Wan Kenobi? I keep trying to watch it, but then the kids yell because they get very upset that it's not an actual thing yet. Yes, and they announced today it's going to be pushed back two days, so it's not premiering that Wednesday. What are you going to do? That just blew your whole plans for that week. Oh, well, for that day. But that Friday night they're going to release two episodes now. It's exciting, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's very exciting. All nighter. It well, probably hour and a half ish or whatever. You gotta watch it again into your podcast. Yes, right? yes. Yeah. So that that'll be our weekend at that particular point. Um, 
How did you? What did you think of the book of Boba Fett? It's not an actual book, right? Just the the show. Well, well the, the show, show was. Oh, goodness. Was. It was in chapters. Just making sure there was a book before. <laughs> no, no. I have not read. Okay, that's fair. We're not the literary podcast. We we're talking moving back to Boba Fett. Did you enjoy the show? Oh yeah. What Love were your favorite it. parts about it? Um, the rainbow. Oh Rainbor, yes. So we all knew that. Um, and then don't ask me to repeat her name. Ming Wen. Ming Na Wen, yeah. Yeah. Fennec she's Shan. awesome. Thank you. Yes, that one. Right. Um, yeah. So she's my favorite. What do you think about Boba oh, Fett with his? Ashitano. Shaka. Tano. Ash- How do you say her name? Ahsoka. Ahsoka Tano. We know an Akasha, so I keep messing oh, it up. Keep that that would be a that would be a problem. Um, what did you think about all the time spent without uh, with him taking his helmet off? That seems to be people. Well, Mandalorian Is this a Q&A? never takes. Yeah, we're t- we're to the literary. We're going to get back to the. We have a special guest that we don't get guests very yeah. often. We're just going to take it and run with it. Okay. What did you think of? These are things we didn't talk about. Leave the door Boba, to your basement more often. Maybe you'll get more random. Well, questions. I don't necessarily yes. want that, okay. but maybe people will start showing. <laughs> Boba Fett having his helmet off a lot yeah. after the Mandalorian always leaving it on. Did it bother you that Boba was helmeted less than, gosh, maybe even a quarter of the time? Not even that. He was always having it off. So no, um, because when he is shown in the original three movies two movies how many is he in all three uh, he's in at uh, least one two empire two of and return yeah. of the Jedi. so when he's shown he's in an official role right mm. so he's playing a part so he's wearing his helmet but you know that doesn't mean he doesn't go behind a closed door and you know eat a cheeseburger a cheeseburger probably a nerf burger or something at that point um i don't know i think a lot of people have just ex- expected Boba Fett to just well, always dad, wear it. His dad didn't. You mean that he took it off from time to time? Mm-hmm. There's different his creeds of Mandalorian. Seen, right? So he never grew up in the traditional Mandalore culture. And that, that one fact. I guess that's very true. I think just the diehard Boba Fett fans truly just wanted to see him in his armor and gun. The one that people just fell in love with when, you know, an Empire... Uh, Vader says no disintegrations, you know, or just standing guard behind Jabba the Hutt. You just wanted to see that that strongness, you know, and then you just see a 60-year-old man always saying a Boba Fett, you know. <laughs> Very father-like, right? So he's more emotional and mature than a lot of other folks are. They're yeah. The strong man all the time. It is. And, and Django... Yes. More toxic masculinity in Star Wars? I don't think you can get more. I in that first tri- in that first trilogy, women were. I mean, they say Leia. We talked about this in the podcast that Leia was supposedly so strong, but she always had to be rescued by the men. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, she was smart and mouthy and didn't take any crap, but you always had to have the guys bail them out. At the end of the day, she was still what five foot two and one hundred and fifteen pounds. Yeah. So she was tiny, but size matters not. They redeemed her when they made her a Jedi in the end. They did, and then she died. She used her force in Rise of Skywalker to send Han's force projection across. That was her? Yes. It's been a while for you. Yeah, and then then she died. That was her last thing. And remember the flashbacks of him training her on uh, Endor. Okay, we need to watch that Did again. She really die? Oh yeah, she's gone. She's but a force is she ghost. Ever really gone? Yes. Carrie Fisher's gone, so and she's she gone. At the end. Wasn't she one of the glowy guys? She was the, a glowy guy. She's not really uh, glowy. Oh my god. You should have more guests more often. Yeah, no, I think having guests does wonders with our, you know, our outlines and our projected discussion points. I'd just like to say it's been over seven minutes. I just came to observe. Yeah. So. Just to sit there and observe? Okay. Well, so we should get back to our discussion on the book. Darth Bane. Darth Bane. Not Tom Hardy, even though they probably really does kind of take away the mask and they resemble each other very much so. The mask. The mask. Okay. So to get back to the story, or at least start the story, uh, we see uh, the name of Darth Bane. It's not Darth Bane yet because he's not in the Sith yet. He hasn't been recruited, etc. We get a whole 
mini prequel into the whole development of him, which was kind of cool. And when this came out, I don't remember knowing it was going to be a trilogy. It was just a self-contained story. And the only time Bane had ever been mentioned was a little bit in the comics, um, where you get to see the battle that they allude to at the very end and the consolidation of the Rula II. And, you, and that's where he met Rain, the little kid, etc. That was in the comics. Okay, so that was the only thing. The rest of this, Drew got to come up with all of it uh, completely, completely on his own. Um, but Darth Bane has a name, and it's Dessel. Whatever. Like Kessel. Kessel Run? You don't like that name? No. That name? Okay, talk to us about what... He's from a planet, Apatros. What was life like for not just him, but everybody that lived on, on this planet? I can summarize it with one word. Hopefully a little bit more so right. I don't have to talk as much. Three words. Bad and backbreaking. Backbreaking. What was what did they do? How did they how did they survive? They were basically coal miners, but not for coal. How did they mine the coal? <laughs> uh, they just went down and mined it. I don't Well they had massive big Hulking jackhammers, and so everybody was just hardened and just jacked. jacked. And And the old guys and deaf, thank you, you're still here, awesome. And uh, they're mining cortosis. What do you recall what the cortosis ore was? It was so valuable, it's like blaster resistant thing, it's lightsaber resistant, resistant lightsaber resistant. So it was definitely um, an ore that took a lot of effort to, to mine, but then it would get shipped off world. And this was almost a, a place that had like indentured servitude where it, they charged you to, to, to have your housing, to have your food, and then you would accrue a debt. It's like a bad prison. It really kind of, and there was really no chance to escape this life mm-hmm. because whatever money you make, it would pay off your debt, and then they would drink or gamble, and they would take out markers against their their money um, that was already there, and it was very much um, uh, your, um, what do you call it, uh, they, they, they would consistently just get further and further in debt, and that was it. They would drink and work and fight, and that's it. Now, the armies would show up um, recruiting, trying to get people re- to fight for the various sides, whether it was for the Brotherhood of the Light, which was the Jedi, or the Sith, the Brotherhood of Darkness. Wasn't it just like the Army of the Light? Or what did I call it? Brotherhood. Oh, you're right. It's Army. Brotherhood of Darkness, Army of the Light. Um, but the people on this planet were pretty much neutral because they were pretty much ignored and nobody was helping them but they knew their importance you know they knew when the they show up to a bar and these recruiters would buy them drinks they knew that it was just to get more bodies casualties for their yeah their war um so anyways um so Dessel is a very, um, you know, it's a soul-crushing type, um, you know, existence. Uh, his father was abusive and big and, and drunk, and drunk, and it was just a bad life. But uh, Dessel was, you know, he was, they gave his height, but everything's in meters. I think he's he like was six like foot. six four. Six, very tall. He's like J.J. Watt. He is a huge defense. <laughs> I'm serious. If you need a visual, a big defensive lineman just jacked beyond belief um and he all these other people are strong but he stands taller than most and just so imposing he could get people to back down just by looking at them then he's just sitting at a sit-back table well well he gets yeah so he's he's doing we're not going to go play by play for this whole book um but he has a fight and he severely hurts somebody and he pretty much gets suspended and so he has to he goes back to a bar, and the only way that he can truly earn enough money is through Sabak. And he doesn't understand what the Force is, or Sabak. He doesn't understand the Force, but he just has these little visions of the future. The future, precognition, like a minority report with precogs. And it's one of those things that's just, for us, we would just say we have a gut feeling. If we're yeah. playing cards, like, I, I just really have a feeling that I'm going to 
get this flush here. You know, just one of those. And for him, he just more times than not, he's very, very successful with it. And so he is able to run up this huge, um, you know, and this is the first time, like I said, that Sabak was truly, um, you know, detailed um, and just it was really fascinating to watch him play for hours with new people and just get the pot rolling. Can you kind of talk about that progressive pot that continues going until somebody has the, the pure Sabak? At the beginning, it was like cheap change. They weren't really doing much, but. It went on and he kept playing them. Like, um, I guess, like, if you're, like, ping pong or something, you pretend you're really bad and then you're really good and you just got double the money. Yeah. He was like a hustler. He was, yeah, he would lose a little bit. And the more, the longer people played, the jackpot got higher. And it was going to go higher until somebody had, um, it's either a pure sabak or an idiot's array. It's the most impro- idiot's array. It's the most improbable hand to have, and with sabak, you play. It's just like blackjack. You want to get to twenty three, and you don't. And at, and there's rounds of betting, and you can get multiple hands. And at any time, you can bet, and somebody could fold, or it just costs more to stay in the pot. And so you're always playing for that pot. Sometimes people stay in just so they have that shot at that big huge jackpot and by the end of the night it's over ten thousand thousands and thousands you know enough to maybe wipe out somebody's debt but you could also drop hundreds and hundreds or thousands of dollars you know trying it for it right the hit or miss type thing so anyways ultimately decel decel um, you know, he wins out, but he really pisses off some of those, uh, some of the recruiters, military men who are there, and they jump him uh, on his way out, which isn't very smart because he's, he's a big boy. And what happens as a result of this? Uh, I think I remember him killing somebody. Yes. Jumped in the darkness, and he had his force vision, or that precognition that, that it's literal. it literally is the spidey sense. And he, see, he senses a tingling because it's dark. And he talked about seeing a vibroblade, which doesn't give off light, but he could sense it. So he knows he's special, mm-hmm. but he has no he idea. He doesn't know what the force is. He, you know, he's just, he's just weak. So he kills the guy and you can't kill a military guy. No. And, um, you know, so he, he kind of has to uh, make a life altering decision. Uh, he's talking to the bartender. A friend of his. It, he's friends? the bartender. Yeah. And he's talking about... Dessel is talking mm-hmm. about a life somewhere else. He's been complaining about Patros for mm-hmm. so long. And this great new thing. Go join the Sith army. Right. And, and the Sith army... Well, it's to, not just all Sith. Exa- that's the thing I it's think. followers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the the Sith run it are like generals and just like kind of the way the clone army is run by yes, um, Jedi. Basically that. Yeah, and so it's the Brotherhood of Darkness and the Sith. Je- um, the Sith, they recruit just normal people to fight their battles for them, not caring, not carrying, not caring. Um, really, if they live or die, they just have mass numbers. But Des really doesn't have a chance or really a decision. He he has no. to get out of there. And the bartender, I can't remember his name. Uh, he's a Nemoidian, so one of those uh, guys that are blockading Naboo and Phantom Menace. Um, he hooks him up and gets him off planet. Yeah, yeah, and that's uh, and really, this book is is broken up into segments. And the first, you can look at it as a prequel to how Bane became Bane, and he's not Bane yet. Um, so we jump three or so years into the future, um, where he is part of. Uh, military organization um, and then after that and we'll come back to this but after that he has his time becoming a Sith and learning and then at the end becoming the Lord of the Sith so it's really in like like an act one act two act three yeah. and so we're almost to the end of act one so um, explain his military what, what is he like in the military because this is a guy who's very much a loner very strong intimidating and he has some force abilities. Not that he can choke people out or lift things, but he just has this, well, like we were just saying, this precognition ability. But what was he like with his troops? 
Well, despite being such a loner in the past, he can easily adapt to the situation and who he's working with. Uh, he joins the Gloom Walkers, which is his sort of troop, despite not being the ranking officer. Everyone sees him like it. And thanks to his intuition, basically nobody dies. And they Everybody always survives. Yeah, and, and they, they keep, always get away. They always get away, and they always have the most dangerous. Um, and again, the Sith are just throwing their numbers, trying to overwhelm. And I guess the, the thing we didn't mention is there's an ongoing war, Jedi and Sith. Duh. But the Jedi and, and this book it's jumps. It's more than that. Yeah, yeah. And, and they have battles happening on multiple fronts. It's not just one planet. Um, so the, the, the Jedi, we break away for a few chapters and we learn about the Army of the Light, who's run by General Hoth. And like, like how we see with General Hoth, it's like we'd assume the Sith to be these, they're dumb, they're throwing their people all, all over. But General Hoth seems like the happy-go-lucky, jumping all over everywhere, really well, aggressive general. Aggressive, he was a good tactician. He had a right-hand man named uh, uh, Farfalla, who, Valentine Farfalla, who rode around on gold and all this ornate jewelry and was very flashy Just and flamboyant. This, it how, is not yeah. what a Jedi is. How the, how the South, or the, the Sith, the Sith are described, it's, they're not acting how they've been described in the movies through the Jedi's perspective. Agree. So they are more than just this one-sided, somewhat political-based view of the Jedi mm -hmm. and the Republic. The Sith are just these bad guys. They don't have, they're all egotistical and they're fighting, but... These are the Jedi who are doing it. And the Jedi are that way as well. And again, it might have evolved in the thousand years between this and what we see with, you know, Luke and Yoda and all of that. Um, but we really, what I like when we get to the Sith Academy is while they still have the, you know, weakness is bad and if you die, then you weren't strong enough. They still have that mindset. Yeah. But yet, they're teachers and they are helping them. And we'll get to it how Bane gets extra help, you know, extra tutoring. Double help. And it, it's, it humanizes them in a way that I don't think the dark side has ever been done before. And students. Right, right. Um, and so back to uh, him and the Gloomwalkers. Uh, he is not in charge. They're following some guy ahead of them. And it's almost... <laughs> Uh, you know, like a, uh, <laughs> like uh, in Hamilton, you know, General, General Lee. Lee and I'm it, a General Lee. Except their General Lee, is, and his name is not important, but he keeps getting these wins because of what Des does with the Just rest of his the troops. There was one time in particular that they had to pick off a lot of people yep. with a rifle, and there's no way they could hit them. And, and they do it somehow. Des takes the gun and fires off 10 shots in five seconds from long range, takes out everybody, and then they're able to storm it and win it. That might have been the ambush that was that's like coming the up. The big one. That was basically idolized. And the people and next to him just couldn't believe it, you know, but they have a loyalty to him because they know that Des is the one that brought them victory. But it's not just victory. It's we didn't die. Yes. You've saved our Everyone lives. the general who keeps them alive. Right. So um, there was a, a, the culmination of his time in the army. What happened with that climactic moment of, um, that really set Bane on the path that he went? Are we talking about the thing? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so it's later. It's, like it's a, not too a much after that. after that. Yeah. They're returning to camp. They're moving troops. Something. And they're just on this path. And everyone's okay with it. The general's okay with it. But Des has this unshakable feeling that we're going to die. We are getting ambushed here. They've been ordered by the high council to do just, this. Just walk and die. And they're, they're, Des's first in command was like, we're going. And Des is like, that's a bad idea. Just wait an hour. Then we have darkness. Something like that. And, but their order was to go right now. And that just wasn't smart. Uh, they were going, and then I, they get off to the side or something. They hide, and there's this ambush party that's going because they knew that they were going to be there, and they were just setting up a trap. I think probably like the the number one set this up so they would die, 
or something. Well, I, I think what it ultimately was was Des stood up for all of his troops and well, yes, but still, like, why would they send them now and there? The, the, so because the ultimate Sith do not care how many people die. And they weren't thinking strategy. They weren't on the battlefield, you know, like Des and, and the Gloomwalkers. They were the all-stars. You send them in every time and they win. The Bad Batch. The Bat, that's exactly kind of it, the Bad Batch. And so this, uh, this, this first general, whatever he would be, you know, he was, we're going to go. If you don't, it's treason and blah, blah, blah. And Des just cold cocks him, knocks him on his butt. They tie him up. Stop. They tie him up, and then Des leads the fight. He's just not listening. Nope. And they end up winning, but they come back. Somehow. They come back, and they go, there's no way that the dude I knocked out is going to say treason because I just saved him, and he gets the glory. Surprise. Surprise. Treason. treason. And he gets handed off to a large brotherhood of the Sith leader who whisks him away, and they think he's dead. Everybody thinks he's dead, he and he never meets the Gloomwalkers again. He never, no one has ever, ever, he's never heard of from again. Des is gone. I mean, the third book. But Des, yes, is yes. gone. Yes. yes, and he shows up. I killed your father on Korriban, which is Act Two of the book, which was my favorite, which brings me back to this book every every several years, because. All of the books about the Jedi Order and Luke and building it up. Here we have a Sith Order on Korriban, the Sith home of the Academy. Sith. Sith Academy. And you get to see what it's like at a boarding school for Sith. The, the teaching, the, 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 they have libraries, they have cafeterias, um, lightsaber training. Um, you know, bashing in the whole mantra you know, uh, you know that they have over and over strike again. First strike hard, no mercy. Pretty much, yeah. They're Cobra Kai with lightsabers. Yeah. What? What were? I mean, you obviously can tell my passion for the dark side of Star Wars, at least not in life, but just Star Wars. And my excitement. What were your thoughts about the the things that happened, the things that he experienced? Because he took on the name Bane. Yes. At this at this juncture, he's not Death anymore. No. What, what did he go through? You know, what were the ups and downs like? It's like an emotional journey. He goes from this guy who's haunted by his father and everything, and he sheds the name Des because it reminds him of his past life, and now he's moving on, and now he's Bane, which... Do you remember why he picked Bane? Like, you're the Bane of my existence. That's what his dad would say to him, yeah, and so he picked it. <laughs> Keep going, sorry. Uh, it's... Like, you're being tasked to do these brutal things. Like, we'll talk about, like, fight to the death mm -hmm. or just... But it's just a school. Yeah. You're just training to be a new person. He's a new student who is vastly older and he's than already, the, the new recruits. Like, he has no training, but he's already ahead of most of them. Because they talk about the dark side so strong in him. All that hate, you know, every all that... The, the pain but he's just uh he's unrefined he's raw, raw and so power. he he gets moments where he can people see his strength not just i mean he's mammoth mammothly Jeez. large mountain so he's intimidating but everybody else has had potentially years of practice instruction he's never held a lightsaber before you know he doesn't, he doesn't know, know he doesn't know force he doesn't know anything about the sith um, and so he becomes a, a student in the library, a student fighting. Um, really big on the library. Very big. He Focused on the history <coughs> of the Sith more so than the current training. Right, right. Which and, obviously plays into the future. <laughs> right. And, and he's the hot shot, and he likes the attention. He likes the power. It's just Top Gun. It's, to it's Top Gun. Oh, my God. It is. it is. You're right. I don't know why. I never saw it that way before. So who's Tom Skerritt? Who? Jester, the who? guy in charge. <laughs> it's the Twi'lek, the guy who at, you know next to the fireplace. He runs the school. That would be Jester. That's no, the no. guy in the monster. Okay, two, two, no, two. No, no. Okay, just it's Top Gun. So it's Top Gun. So, anyways, we got the uh, we got him. You know, the, the there's moments in there where he has a lot of success early on. He's fighting. He almost, I think he did. He killed somebody in combat, his first time combat. And yes. they didn't want to kill people, 
but he said he he had the mantra, you know, if he was strong, if he wasn't strong, you know, he doesn't deserve to live. Something to that effect. Very extreme. And people, it was literally like the Red Sea. They get out of the way as he leaves the circle. You know, it, it's just amazing. Um, so he has a very inflated sense of himself, and people see the power, but it's just not refined. And so he comes across his his big nemesis, who is the number one duelist there yep. in the academy. And then talk about that gentleman, and then their build up, and then. I think his name's Sirak. Is that how you pronounce it? Yeah. That? Well, do you know what? Uh, Zabrak. Species? He's a Zabrak. What's a Zabrak? Darth Visual. Maul. It's Darth. It's Darth Maul minus the face paint. I always pictured it like, um, like, an Akale. That's what I thought it was, but short. An Ak. I don't know why, but I hear Zabrak, and it's like the oh, Akale, like the Ak- giant green spider it's from started. Geonosis. The giant green sort of spider-looking thing. Okay, it's not that. It. That's what I thought it was, though. <laughs> How would that thing hold a lightsaber? <laughs> I don't know. That's okay. So a picture, Darth Maul, minus the face paint. Um, I believe he had other Zabraks around. There were twins. I mean, they just had different color skins. Um, but this one was walking around very confident and arrogant and very the number one. Number one, the greatest uh, student. Yes, uh, the, the one everyone wants to be, but nobody can. He is fabled. He is like an outlaw, sort of. Nobody yeah. can beat him. Nobody challenges him. You're open to free challenges whenever you want. You just walk out and say the name. And nobody does it because they know that this guy is the real deal. And Bane, they're, they're scared of. Yes. But this dude, they don't even... Terrified. They don't even think about him. And then one day, Bane versus Sirak. Who called out whom? I think Bane called out Sirak the first time. Ultimate confidence. Ultimate confidence. I will beat you. I don't think he does beat him, though. <laughs> At least, I, 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 there's two fights between them. I'm yes. I'm this first one. He gets decimated. Decimated. Broken, broken bones. Wrong. Crushed. Uh, does Sirak use, like, a double-bladed lightsaber? I think he does, like, Maul, yeah. Yeah, because they explain later that... Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, which guy? Uh teacher because there's a couple teachers a uh, kasim is is yes. the duelist yeah. and he talks about how different styles or mm-hmm. different types of weapons they throw off your opponent at least subconsciously just because you don't know the full potential of what they could do like a double-bladed lightsaber you could spin it around even though they might not do that you're still going to be like worse sure i guess well, with a single lightsaber, it's big slashing big cuts. Side, but you can like go fast and whip it. But a du- two-handed, if you hold it out in front of you, you can just boom, 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 boom. You know, end yes. after end, and get multiple hits from different angles without much effort. And so it's kind of more elegant dancer-like. Which, if you've seen Darth Maul, you know what we're talking about. Flipping all over. With it, my, you don't even have to flip, but just the the movement that you can elicit by the double blade. Um, so he gets crushed. <sighs> Destroyed. Destroyed. Back to the back to tank. And 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 he's out of action. He's just embarrassed. People ignore him. Uh, he's he is just That's how it works. Yeah. Though. You you lose your shunned, earn your victory back. Mm-hmm. And and he has trouble tapping into the dark side. He he really struggles. And this is where he spends time in the library. He's he lost his hatred. And he's researching all of the the Sith lore. And a lot of the beliefs that they don't even practice anymore. And this is where he finds the out rule of two. the rule of two and learns about Darth Raven. Um, and he just doesn't understand why. And anytime he asks about it, he gets shut down. Um, you can't know about you that. You can't know about it. You know, um, so he has to do that in private. Um, and so he's, he's licking his wounds. He's healing. He's trying to get back into the dark side and tap it in. And he just knows his time is, um, he's living on borrowed time unless he can flip it around. So then we have the emergence of an important character for the remaining, uh, remainder of the story. One of the weirdest names ever. Githany. Githany. Talk to us about Githany. Um... Uh... Basically, feels like a Zam Wessel character, but with okay. more dialogue. Okay. Very like. I don't want to say seduct seductress, but sort of. 
Oh, very much so. She's very, very sexy, they talk about, that she definitely uses her looks to put catch people off guard. She even tries it on Bane at different doesn't times. Work. It does. Well, at one point, but very smart, mm-hmm. very knows what they're doing, and the end goal to everything that they do. Like, she's just, like, everything she does, she does with a purpose, mm-hmm. and she befriends Bane with the end purpose of I think killing Sirac. Sirac. Using him. Using him to get a better spot. Yes. And then she can elevate her spot. She was actually a defector from the Army of the Light. I do remember this. And helped the Sith overthrow in one of the battles, overthrow the Jedi in one of the many battles. And then she came here. So she has some Force abilities. Yes. And so he is has been forbidden to be trained by any of the Masters. But she's not a master. She's not. She's going to relay the information from the masters to him. Exactly. So, like, at night, she will tell him everything that he's missed so he can keep up on his homework. And he even goes to Lord Kasim, the lightsaber master, late at night. Please train me. Please train me. And the guy does, even though he's been told not to. So, in secret, Bane is building up his, his fighting and his intelligence and practices and Sith and, magic. Yeah. And all of that stuff. Both doing it at the same time. And none of them know that the other one works. See, Bane, that Sabacc slash poker player, totally just don't show your cards. Totally. So um, he does have an attraction to her. They eventually kind of have a little thing, nothing major. Um, But it's to, to resuscitate him, rebuild him up until he finally has an opportunity um, to really become the bane for the rest of the book. She teaches him how to get back into the dark side, force lightning, creating massive storms in the I, library, yeah. <laughs> you know, massive tornadoes and lightning and purple lightning, and just um, visually, I can't imagine what that would look like. This is why I would love Darth Bane. I love a TV show. To this. be a Disney Plus of Darth Bane stuff. It would have been so it amazing. It can't try to stray from the books, though. Like, it can't be... It has to be the book. Yeah. Cause Give him some leeway, but... The book is good enough. Why change it? It is. That, I agree. Well, like The Divergent movies are different. The books were okay. Yeah. But the movie was... They might have to tweak it. Excuse me, tweak it. Yeah, for just change something. Um, so they build it back up, and for the ultimate rematch against the Sabak, uh, the Zabrak... Um, Bane versus Sirek. It was a rematch. It was uh, um, the dude didn't expect to be called again, and Bane walked out. Nobody had heard him, and people they're gonna let the weak call themselves out of the herd. If you think you can do it, and you want to die, fine. Um, and they just have a very glorious battle, force wielding magic back and forth powers, um, and then Bane is just toying with him. Because he's learned so much yeah. about the lightsaber. I, d- I don't know why he'd do that. Like, you don't need to play with your food. Like, beat him already. Like, sure, it's all about beating him. Like, you're stronger than him now, mm-hmm. but the point is to beat him. The why, po- why not smash him? Smash him, but draw it out, and everybody knows that that guy, the they number one, make. isn't going to win, and so it's humiliating and just soul-crushing. He wants to end this Zabrax really work out soul well and so Bane breaks arms and he sends yeah. he sends the dude to back the back, to the back to tank. tank and nobody knew that he was getting better and working and it was just a complete shock just a drop out. his power is back before it was raw now he is a, he's an equal he goes mouth and off to the head of the academy you know what I mean and Khan. uh, Khan's the head of the army Lord Khans, this guy I is like a, with a Q. Oh. It's a big Twi'lek, a big, oh. like a Bib Fortuna. Corsim, something like that. Um, there's a lot of names in these Cordis. books, folks. Cordis. But he mouths off to him and pretty much <laughs> walks in powerful, you know, and, and demands things. And, all, and he leaves. He leaves the academy. He walks out. And because he's like, nobody has the power to stop me. Bane is a bad man. So he walks to the, um, it, almost a certain death, walks out to the old burial grounds of the old Sith Lords, which I just loved. 
um, just to see what was there. And all of the tombs had been pillaged over the millennia. Didn't really see anything. He goes um, on a lot of holocron hunts. He does. He I don't know if this one was for a holocron. Well, no, he just found Revan's one. Yep, in the next act, yeah. Yeah, yeah but uh, sorry, we're, sorry, no, sorry, we're sorry. not too far Spoiler. away from that. But uh, he pretty much goes and, and realizes the, um, you know, that, that he wants to know more, and it's all dead here on Korriban. There's nothing for him on Korriban, but stuff through the library has shown him where Darth Revan's holocron is. And so that Enter Act Three. He, he steals the ship of Cordis's because no one can stop him, and he goes to look for it. You know, he thinks he's already thinking, who's my number two going to be? He's already thinking power of two. But in order for that to happen, he's going to have to get rid of all of the Sith. The Brotherhood of Darkness. Mm-hmm. And he's thinking, is uh, Githany, is she a worthy? You know, he likes when she's deceptive. He likes beautiful, obviously. But uh, he likes her, her, her dark side and what she's done for him. But he definitely knows she was trying to play him. Yeah. He calls her on it. And he is, from here on out, a bad man. There is no weak, no weakness anymore. And so while this is going on, while he's growing as a Sith, the Army of the Darkness is fighting... And, and defeating the Sith in that the they're clearing out all of the academies and sending all the students and acolytes to the front lines to help lead the regular military people against the Jedi because they're realizing that this is going to be it. And they're stuck on a planet, R- Rushin, R-U-U, S-A-N. So this is where the big fight's going to be. And Cordis is like, we need you. And he goes, no, I'm not going fighting in your in your war war. and uh, and they're like we need you know this powerful man he goes no and so he goes on a journey and so while he's on his journey that war is still happening the sith have blockaded this planet so that jedi can't land extra people on there and so this is going to be the final battlefield that's act three already set up so the remainder of act two uh, he goes to search for a holocron which give a little bit of background on holocrons but then the journey when he got there, please. Yes. So holocrons are these very ancient, well, even like a thousand years ago compared to Darth Revan, very, very old. Well, he was like 4,000 years ago, right? Uh, 4,000 before the Battle of Yavin, 3,000 before this. BBY. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, they're just data repositories. They're like... You can put, like, a personality into it. I never really understood that. Like It's you, AI. Yeah, you can give it a certain amount of your information. Like, you've talked to it over the years, and then it is you. Like, oh, my it, gosh. It says what you would say. It's Alexa. Because... It is Alexa. It is. Alexa's you program in, you record everything you know about whatever, all your beliefs, everything you found, but then when people access it, they have to go through this Alexa program which is really going through darth raven you're talking to darth raven a little miniature yeah and he helps you out so um but the construction of them as we find out in the second book very very taxing like you have to know what to do like he spends all this time trying to make one but then he realizes he's missing something (laughs) and he gets all frustrated because it could take days or hours to attempt to piece it together like building a computer from scratch without really knowing except you have a time limit Mm mm-hmm and so if he can find a holocron of an ancient Sith Lord that hasn't been taken, destroyed, um, manipulated. Because trying to control the media here and get rid of them all. Control the media. In a way, yeah. They, they, the biggest they you know, horde the of... Come back. They can't, so they take it and they stash it. Probably, I don't know why they don't destroy it. Um, so that's his goal. So he goes to this planet and, um, and the dark side calls to him. And this is the first time that I recall seeing or reading about rancors and writing them in the in the book yes or in star wars lore and he uses the force to kind of take control of his mind and then rides the rancor all the way to this location it's like the valley of dark lords or something yes valley of the dark lords oh that sounds like what no that was on korriban that was with all the dead people this is on the different planet he drives right through the jungle. Yeah, 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 yeah. But he went for a search there too. 
But he rides it through the jungle, and it's almost like a large Mayan temple in the middle of a big clearing. And the rancor will not go into the clearing because it senses Scared. the dark side. So he goes in to get it, and he has to find it, and, and he, he does get it eventually. But as he walks out, Lord Cordis had sent somebody after him. Mm -hmm. And that would be who? Do you remember the name? It's like a K. Kasim. Kasim. The man who trained man him who trained on his him time off. The true rule of two moments here. That's right. His apprentice becomes the master. Do you want me to talk about this? I would love okay. to. It was uh, a great... Kasim shows up and he's very mad. I think he has some like passionate speech about why he's not doing the right thing. Why Bane isn't doing it. Yeah. Come fight come, with us. What are you doing? Win. And then he enlightens him with the rule of two. And then... And Kasim does the fates here. Yeah, and Kasim has had and Kasim is still the better swordsman. Yes. And he had always held back against Bane, never truly showing your absolute best strength and move. I think Bane was doing that too. Probably to some degree, but Kasim would have been more yeah, skilled. Yeah. And so they're but fighting and fighting magic. and the only way that, that Bane actually gets it, I think Kasim pushes, throws him out of the temple like down the stairs or whatever, but Bane uses the force, pulls the rocks down brings the temple down, oh. and kills Kasim. Full beautiful. boss move. That was um, a great chapter. And I really, yeah, it was. And I really felt bad for Kasim just because uh, the teacher did so much, so much for him so and much. helped him when nobody else would. But Bane might look at that as a weakness and didn't truly... Um, didn't really want to do that. So um, I guess the main thing here that uh, that we find in the holocron um, is what something that is called a thought bomb. I thought it was kind of a cringy name. I think of. it's a horrendous name that probably Drew, the author, got stuck with from the comics. Thought and, bomb. And now we're getting close to the Act 3 that was m probably 50-50 already pre-written yeah. in storyline at least. Um, and so Bane decides to go back, go to the war, Sean. because he needs to um, destroy the brotherhood, destroy of the, the brotherhood of the Sith, and make the Jedi think and kill them too as much, but make them think that the Sith are extinct. Um, and so with this, uh, he he shows up, um, you know, and uh, uh, um, was Beth, not Beth, Githany? Did she show up at this planet? Because she I, she does because she like poisons him or something yeah, i think lord khan sends her to try to recruit bane as well yes and that doesn't work very well and she sees him that he won etc and and she kisses him and he senses that there's poison on his lips and nobody would sense it that fast but but he's a he sith lord the sith. he can recognize it and he can turn the force and kill it from the inside or at least roll it mm -hmm. Keep but it back. after a little bit longer he realizes she had a second poison to mask the first or vice versa. Yeah. And he is desperately sick and he's like dying. He's going to die. He's going to die. So in some way he was proud of her for being so deceptive and maybe she would be a number two. But he's going to die. But he's going to die. And she wanted, um, if he wasn't going to help the Brotherhood and he's so weak, even though he's a strong man, but if she can get to him and kill him, then he wasn't deserving he to weak. live, right? So talk to us about how he gets healed, um, where he goes, what he does, because a very visual, graphic moment's coming up. Very, very graphic. Mm. So he's like kind of stumbling around, and he ends up on this camp, I guess. It's, a, it's on Ambria. Ambria. A-M-B-R-I-A. Yes, Ambria. And that's where he was when she kissed him, yes. but, yeah. And he finds this man named Caleb, and he's this, what are the odds, he's a healer. A healer. A very, very good healer. Who doesn't side with the war no. at all. Because if he does, he loses. I and, guess so. And dies. But he heals him, but only... only he reluctantly heals him. He refuses, but he... Yeah. Go, go, go. You take it. No, nope. he refuses to heal him. There's nothing he can... There's nothing you can say to make me want... To make me heal you. 
But Bane senses something. A daughter. He senses he's not alone in that room. And so he finds around, he kicks a carpet and finds a trap door and there's a little kid underneath it. The, tap, the trap door will be important in another book. In a future book. Using the force, and remember he is dying. He levitates just the so kid strong. out of the hole, hangs her upside down over the pot of boiling water, the fire, and Caleb goes, I'll heal you. I'll heal you. He could have killed him. He could have. He could have just, but it would have sacrificed his daughter. No, like, well, he's still weak or whatever, and he's, like, operating on him. Just kill him. Oh, well, I, all that power, he knows, he can sense power. And there was definitely something that uh, was, uh, um, didn't need to be spoken, but just actions. Because they talk about Bane's tongue swells up at some point. He can't really even talk, uh, but just the action. Um, they know that, that it's going to uh, it's going to die. So once he's healed, he goes to the camp. He, he, he shows his worth um, amongst the, the Sith. They, make, they do this magic in a big chant, and they can rain down lightning and fire and kill a bunch of Jedi and could just snuff them out. But then with the power of the force. with the power of the force and the dark side, um, but then they go and the, the, some of the Sith break free of it because Bane has too much power, and they go off in order to fight, like hand to hand combat out in the field and overrun them and kill them as they retreat. All right, mm -hmm. and ultimately, it plays out where Bane is able to finally talk to Lord Khan about the thought bomb. And how that could work. Hey, you should definitely use this. It won't hurt you guys at all. No, it, it'll consolidate all of the the, the Sith Force power, and Just it will decimate be them. unleashed and kill any of the other Force users, the Jedi, and we will be victorious. Victorious. Uh -huh. So all the Sith head down to the caverns, and can, do you remember the kind of what happens with this? It was like they were in some circle, and they were all like. They were there, but they weren't mentally there, and they were making this big orb thing. It, yeah, it was... But, like, if the spell failed, they were all cast into the void forever or something. Like yeah, that. think visually in a big cavern. Like a big red ball. It's like in uh, Aquaman. I think it's when a uh, mirror can, like, displace water. And make, like, the bubble? And make the bubble. Yeah. So it's a big bubble that's full of the dark side, and it everybody got cold in the cavern, and every and Khan was going crazy, and Githany is there with him, and she senses that this is not good, that Bane She's double crossed him, and so she tries to get out of there. But this bomb just gets bigger and bigger, and all of the souls of everybody just it's like a big cult gets sucked into this thing, until it gets so much that he just ultimately oh the oh. Jedi well hold on General Hoth and a hundred Jedi go in there. Not knowing about a thought bomb, but knowing that this could be the end. The end um, of war. But we have them trapped. We have all of the Sith in there. Let's go finish it. And so the, the big wigs of the Jedi go in there. And once they get in there, <laughs> Lord Khan looks down with like dead, crazy eyes at him. And then they unleash the thought bomb. Boom. And anything within miles... Uh, a force are just vaporized. Like even Bane feels it. Bane like and he's, he's a, very far. Away he like never the went. Side of the planet. He is the only Sith remaining. Githany got turned into ash, just and she destroyed. was a few hundred meters away trying to escape, and she got lost and turned around. She can't escape. But uh, so a few Jedi who did survive were way out in the battlefield, uh, but uh, the Sith are completely gone, wiped out, um, or so the Jedi think, which is exactly what Bane wants. What Could Bane be wants. Dead. Mm -hmm. And so the very final aspects of this book, um, Bane is leaving and he comes across a little girl. Can yes. you remember what that little girl had done right before Bane got there? She killed a couple, like, they were either like, I doubt they were Jedi, but they were like Republic people. Fighters so. of the Army of the Light. Yeah. But not Jedi. Why was she so upset? We haven't talked about these things yet. They took her brother or something. Remember the big floating force type? <sighs> yes. What were those called? It's like rollers or something. They, I think they had different names. Um, 
They weren't but they boppers. Could, like, telepathically speak. They were literally like floating fuzzballs. Yeah. I think that they were definitely from the uh, the comics because reading about them, like, oh, yeah, these things stink. But they're very force sensitive beings that um, were getting murdered and slaughtered by the Jedi because they had some force ability and, and really they didn't know anything about them. Mm-hmm. And so these two, not Jedi, but the the people who fought with the Jedi, they had been slaughtering them, and she was upset. This little girl, and she snapped their neck and killed them they just died. instantly and bane saw this my apprentice and that's how it ends do you want to come with me and you know if you can keep up well what if i I'm, i can't keep up well then you're not deserving you know and so we'll kill you. the thing is there's always two only two only two and so in a little short span one man was able to wipe out the entirety of the Sith. He's just too smart. Yeah, he's smart. He's and so where the, where the books go from here, the second book goes 10 years into the future. It's a big jump. Yes, and this girl, Rain, who becomes Xana and Darth Xana. Um, so, you know, if she's 9, 10, so now she's 18, 19, 20, a young oh, woman. Yeah, he's Darth Bane now. He's Darth Bane, um, Lord of the Sith, and... Um, the, that it, second book is all about the rule. It's called the rule of two. And then the finale is the dynasty of evil. And the thing with the Sith, they always have two and the masters prepare the, the apprentice, um, all the time. And the apprentice at some point has to challenge the dark Lord. And if, if they, they win, win, then they get a new apprentice, they ascend and they go and find somebody. But if they lose, they lose, they weren't they deserving. Weren't, they weren't deserving. They're not strong enough. It's very smart. It's it's if it's only going to be it's two of them. Philosophy. Yep. Yeah, the the uh, the strongest is always in charge, and um, Survival of the fittest. So the second and third book are much different than the first. No Sith Academy, etc. No. But it's gambling. really interesting to see how they um, fight behind the scenes, you know, and make their presence known in small ways, but yet. The Jedi can't know about us yet. Really, the second book is just a big coup, but they never show up. They. They. The two. The Sith. Yes. Trying to topple governments and different stuff, causing problems, right? Um, Yeah. I was going to say something. Oh, even with uh, in the movies, before the Sith are announced in Revenge of the Sith, you know, there's a moment in Phantom Menace where Darth Maul is talking to him. He says, at last, we'll make our presence known. At last, you know, the Jedi will know that we are here. It took that long. Because they're silent. They aren't letting them know. That way they, they can... foolish. No, they can amass power. It might have been really hard for Palpatine to get where he was if he... If the, they, if the Jedi were chasing after this Darth Sidious ahead of time, it might have been very tricky for him to fly under the radar in like a way he did. like he did so um anyways that was the first book and yes oh we're gonna give spoilers um but uh it is a fantastic read um all three acts are good in their own right did you just say spoilers after yeah we talked about good. it for like an hour yeah i know we should have said that ahead of time but <laughs> i kind of figure that when we said we're going to talk about a book and critique it. But anyways, um, again, I just really, really liked this book. Um, this book. And Bane is a man of few words, you know. Um, he, he is, but when he, they, he's, he's a thinker. When he speaks, he has something to say. Yes. And he always has, his brain's always working. Not only is he physically imposing, but he's mentally very strong um, and very strategic, which you'll find out in the next couple books. Because right now he's 25 to probably 25 when he started as Des. It is 35. So maybe he's like maybe he's 28, 29 at this point. Maybe 30, depending on how much time he was at the Sith Academy. Um, so a very accomplished young man um, who is um, changing really the Sith mantra. All the way up to the present, you know, up through Palpatine, etc. Forever. Forever. So, um, overall impressions, I think you know where I stand. Were there certain things that you just really liked or disliked about I, it? I really liked um, the Sabak part. 
I, that was yeah. a lot of fun. Even though it was like a couple pages, it was uh, it was fun. But how he was manipulating the people uh, and learning about the game. Yeah. And like I didn't know how to play Sabak. Mm -mm. Nobody really does know the official rules, even if like because there's so many variations of it. But yeah, just seeing a different take on it. Was... And I, I liked. What do you think about their hollow hollow force field that they had for the cards? Where like can't they can't change? Because your cards are holographic in nature that they're projected like a it's not this but a king of diamonds and ace of spades but they have different names for the things um, and you can put certain cards into this protective field. So imagine a they glow don't. spot on your Just table. Like a lock in. It locks it because at some point after each round there could be what I think they called them a randomizer that could it, all of a sudden think of like a slot machine, how the things just go around at any time, those cards could change. And so you want to lock in certain cards and they could change and that could be for the good or for the bad. And that's why people like to stay in for that ultimate jackpot. But I'm glad you said the Spock. That's one I read multiple times or I'd slow down just to make sure that I, understood yeah. what was happening. I had a lot of fun reading that part. Good, good. Uh, what do you th did did you enjoy the the schooling aspect at all? I think it was I think it was good. Yeah. yeah. It I'm not complaining about it. It wasn't bad. It uh -huh. just wasn't the best part of the book. Was it Sabak or no, the way that he no. read? Okay. <laughs> like cuz you could have stopped at like page 30. <laughs> the the big climax of it. Yeah. Was probably the best part with like Ugh, the thought bomb, but yeah, just like the future of it. What about um, for me? The weakest part was pretty much anything that the author had to have in his story yes. because of it the would have comics. Been like a five out of five, ten out of ten book. If you could like, they weren't bouncers or whatever. Bouncers. That was yeah, it. If if those bouncers. didn't exist, like if. Their family would have, if Rain's family would have been killed, that would have been so much better. They literally like these big but, balloon Furbies that don't even, they, they force talk to you. They don't even talk and... Change the name of the thought bomb. Make it an original story. Yeah. And even if you had the same blow up, but in a, a different name for it, or that's where I really saw him being, his hands tied behind his back. Yeah. If that makes sense. Um, I, I do appreciate how it had to play out that way. In order for him to get Xana, uh, they call her Rain at this point, uh, but to get his apprentice, maybe Drew could have come up with a different way for it because this girl had no impact in the story until that last, you know, little bit. That last it's little like a segment. couple pages. Yeah. But uh, good. So, yeah, this is one, like I said, I've recommended to uh, a number of people, and they, with zero Star Wars care in the world, um, two of the three that I can think of were so excited about it that they went and read the rest of the trilogy um, without even having been told, and they hadn't read a Star Wars book before. And yeah. the other one, just um, and maybe as a favor to me, they read it, and they're like, yeah, it was good. And I don't know if they actually finished it or not, no. but uh, I'd like to think she did. But um, but I, I do think it's a good, I think it's a good story. I, I really do. Um, one of the things that I, I, <laughs> I feel dorky saying this, but whenever he goes through pain, especially in the next couple books, um, he has this way of owning the pain. Like, instead of just like, let the pain get over it, like, taking it and using it dorky. to fuel the dark side you like within him. I think it helps center him in his mind. And, and it seems so corny, but if I slam my finger in a door or I stub my toe or you wake up with a Charlie horse in your cap and it's just relent unrelenting, you know, then you just, I've thought about this a couple of times and it, it kind of helped because pain is a lot of it is, you know, your nerves and how yeah. you process things in your brain. And so if you give into it, then you're, you know, you are a slave to it. Um, and so that's just one of the little things that I've taken from it um, in my very limited pain experience that uh, I thought was pretty, uh, pretty interesting. I did anyways, but um, good. I don't have anything else for this book. Nope. No, nope, you as well. All right. Uh, well, 
Thank you all for listening. I hope you uh, enjoyed this. If you've read it or not, um, it's a great story. Yeah, obviously, we spoiled it, but uh, we left out a lot of cool little things that happened throughout uh, action, dialogue, things like that. Um, you know, double crosses and fights behind the scenes, you know, at the Sith camp, Sith Academy, rather. Um, so I, I think you'd enjoy it. So um, we'll be back, um, you know, in the near future. Uh, to uh, no, start, to we're taking another month well, break. Not a month. We do have a, a little uh, time coming off here in a bit, but we'll be back real soon with our um, season two rewatch of Mandalorian, um, and maybe a, another odd little um, you know different outlier type episode podcast from time to time, all leading up to Obi Wan. All right. Well, uh, if you want to have any questions, if you've read the Darth Bane book. Please shoot us a um, you know a, um, a message. You can read it in the profile, um, you know Instagram, um, Twitter, what else? Our YouTube channel. What's our Gmail? A Gmail is mallratspod at gmail dot com. Um, let us know what you thought of not necessarily our podcast, but what you thought of the book, what you liked. Do you have books and um, that you read for Star Wars that you really yes, liked? Make me read more books. Oh yeah, force you to read. Um, but uh, what what are, what are your thoughts concerning the literature of Star Wars, uh, pros or cons? Um, really like to hear what you have to say. So just send us questions, please. Please, yeah, yeah. We'll uh, get those back into random, uh, regular or not random, regular rotation. Um, we don't have any questions. Not for this time. Not for this time. One oh, last time. Or well, things are a little bit busy for all, so that's okay. Uh, all right. So thank you so much for listening. I'm Bob. I'm Nolan. And um, take care. You're listening to Mallrats Podcast.